Hello, uh, hi, uh, I am Dr. Nan Kishore, uh, working as consultant urologist in Aster RV Hospital. He is uh, Dr. Ravish, uh, who is uh, lead consultant urologist in Aster RV uh, Hospital. So today, for the purpose of uh, knowledge sharing, so we are going to discuss on uh, one of the topics and uh, we are going to make this as a regular session to educate our patients as well as the public uh, population. So today we have chosen a topic uh, by name Lutz and Renal uh, Dysfunction. Uh, Dr. Ravish, so everyone wants to know what is actually Lutz. So what is Lutz? Lutz is nothing but lower urinary tract symptoms. Lower urinary tract symptoms have a lot of varying of symptoms and it has a lot of other co-associated diseases. It is not one these symptoms are not related to one disease, they are related to a number of other diseases together. I would explain it about each disease and what later. Okay, so when we are talking about lower urinary tract symptoms, yeah. so what do you mean by lower urinary tract? Lower urinary tract means is the bladder, the urethra, the prostate, the meatus, Phymos skin are all related to lower urinary tract. Like the urinary tract consists of the kidney, the ureter, bladder, the penile urethra, the meatus. The things above the bladder is called the upper urinary tract. The one below the ureter, below the ureter is called the lower urinary tract. So the lower urinary tract mainly consists of the bladder, the prostatic urethra. The penile urethra, the bulbar urethra, the membranous urethra, and the meatus and the phymos skin. Okay, so when we are talking about uh, the lower urinary tract symptoms, can you just enumerate uh, what are the symptoms like? See, the common symptoms which the lower urinary tract consists of hesitancy to pass urine. Hesitancy means when you go to pass urine, you have to wait for some time, apply a little bit of pressure to pass urine and then the urine comes. That means as soon as you go, the urine doesn't come. You have to wait for some time for the initiation to occur and then the urine comes. This is called hesitancy. The other is the poor stream of urination. Poor stream, when you try to pass urine, the urine goes in a slow force and the duration is also for a longer time. The bladder doesn't empty immediately. And also the other one is Call the urgency also present in lower urinary tract. What is urgency? Before you reach the bowel, the urine tries to dribble out. That means you have to rush to the toilet to pass urine. So if you see hesitancy and urgency are the exact opposite to each other. But both are related to urinary tract symptoms. The other one is decreased stream of maturation. The force of the urine is low. And the other one both related to is incomplete emptying of the bladder. That means after you pass urine, you feel you have not emptied your bladder completely. If you wait for some time and try to pass urine, you might pass a little more of urine. So sometimes it leads to double voiding. The other one is called stress incontinence or the urge incontinence. Stress incontinence means when you change position, you try to get up, there's some amount of urine dripping into the bladder. Urge incontinence is nothing but before you reach the toilet, there are a few drops which get into your undergarment. These are the symptoms of the lower urinary tract. So, uh, would you add uh, frequency, diurnal frequency? Yes, frequency is also the symptom. Why does frequency occur? Is because of your incomplete emptying of the bladder. That means you are partially emptying. It's like a half-filled vessel. So, when the half-filled vessel, the time duration taken for the cup to get filled is only half the time. So if you have a normal frequency of 4 times, you will empty about 8 times. It depends on the vesicular urine, how much is being behaved. Is there any symptom like, you know, the old man is getting up uh, multiple times in the night or nocturia? Yeah, nocturia if you see. If you see with age factor, nocturia is slightly present about 1 to 1 and a half times more than the normal. If you see in younger age groups, before 45 to 50 years, you don't get up. Later by 50 to 60 years, you get up once or twice in the urine. Sometimes after 60 years, you get up more times to pass urine. When the frequency is more than 2 to 3 times, 
When it is more than three to three times, that means we have to think there is something wrong in the symptoms. The other thing of nocturia you should also not forget is patients with cardiac history and this. They have a little more of frequency of passing urine is because of the cardiac effect. And one more physiological point of increased frequency in the night is when you rest in the night, the pumping effect of the lower limbs and this decreases with age group. Indirectly setting some hormonal variations in the body where the emptying and the diuresis of urine is higher in the night times. The concentrating capacity is low in the older people. That is why the frequency also increases. So when there is nocturia, you have to think of a lot of things, not only say that it is lower urinary tract. You have to think about the cardiac, you have to think about the age, it's pulmonological thing also. So a nocturia is one thing which is not related not only to urinary tract but to other comorbid conditions also. Okay, that's good. So uh, when, you are talk, when we are talking about uh, LUTs, is there any you know, uh, gender uh, preferences or uh, age related change? See, LUTs doesn't have any gender difference. It is slightly higher in the males than the females in the older age group. In the younger age group, if you see, the females have slightly lutes, little more higher symptoms than the males in. And if you take the children, it is nearly common in the children as the sick. Why I said this is, see, lutes, when it is there in a female in the younger age group or this, it might be because of lower urinary tract and symptoms. In the males, in the elderly, it is because of lot of organs getting enlarged, causing obstruction to the urinary flow. If you see the females, they have a shorter urethra. In a male, it is a longer urethra. It's because of the penile length. They have the prostatic enlargement. They have prostatitis. They have stitcher urethra. They have meatal stenosis and phimosis. So, the associated disease are very high in the elderly age group than the women. In women, it is just the meatal stenosis or an irritable bladder which is there. So, if you say age preference, yes, in the younger age group, females are slightly have more youths. In the after 50 years, you see the males take over the disease in and younger age group, that is the very uh, very very younger age group, the symptoms are the same in both ages. Okay. So if you are talking about the low neural tract symptoms, uh, can you uh, enumerate some of the causes why low neural tract symptoms? See, lower in I will come from the bottom most to the upper part. If you see, the first I would like to see in a male is phimo skin, the perfusion skin. So it's an anatomical anatomically which I'm saying, yeah. Okay. If you see the skin, perfusion skin, perfusion skin is an elastic skin which can be easily retracted on the penis as age goes on, the elasticity reduces and because of chronic infection, there is some fibrosis at the tip and it causes blockage in the urinary passage, which most of them don't realize. It. And also because of the hygiene effect where might be in the younger age group and in the Indian society, where we are not really taught that the perpetual skin should be regularly retracted, cleaned and put back in the morning and the bath hygiene is not thought. This leads to phimosis. Phimosis leads to retention of urine. That means because of the blockage there and it is obstructing the meatus for the urine, the urine is not emptying completely. This leads to decreased force of urination, increased frequency, recurrent urinary tract infection and incomplete emptying. So first cause is phimosis anatomically. Next is the meatal stenosis. The third is the stitcher urethra, next is bladder neck pain, prostatic enlargement, high bladder neck or a stone in the bladder, stone in the urethra or an irritable bladder in males. In a females it is meatal stenosis or urethral stenosis which is very common in the elderly age group and in the younger age group it is the urinary tract infection in females. Okay. And in children also it is phimosis and meatal stenosis which is more common. So, uh, so you have enumerated almost all of them as an obstructive or an anatomical cause. Is yeah. there any non-anatomical cause? See, all non-anatomical causes also are there like comorbid conditions which are present with diabetes, obesity, are the non-anatomical. Like urinary tract infection is also a non-anatomical cause where the bladder becomes irritable and that causes an obstructive lower urinary tract symptoms. And the other is non-neurogenic, neurogenic bladder which is present or because of diabetes leading to neurogenic bladder which causes lower urinary tract symptoms. So non anatomical causes will also be present in these cases. Uh, like uh, Dr. Ravish, um, if you want to tell about something about the lifestyle changes like smoking, cough. See, if you take the lifestyle changes, yes, if you see any irritable factor, 
irritable factor which causes irritability to the bladder should be changed as like like if you say smoking causes different type of exotoxins which are present causes irritability of the bladder causing overactive bladder causing increased frequency irritability also and one of the things also is these exotoxins also also can lead to the damage of the normal mucosa and cause cancer in the later. later part of the life the other thing alcohol alcohol also which is excreted causes irritation to the bladder causing overactive bladder so these lifestyles is obesity which causes the compressive symptoms and these things which the suprapubic fat when it is too high the emptying becomes difficult so obesity drinking and night if you see the other thing is when smokers and alcoholics if you see because they drink and they smoke and the mucosa becomes dry of the mouth causing them excessively to drink water more water in the night times or excessive drinking will lead to increase urinary production causing over the same thing also happens happen. with the you know obsessive tea drinkers obsessive the tea drinkers tea and see you say caffeine caffeine containing drinks and coffee causes irritability of the bladder so tea and coffee drinkers have to reduce it when they realize they have an overactive bladder so that's why i said low urinary tract has co associated a lot of things with it so just don't think that because it is because of some obstructive symptom you are getting overactive you have to see the lifestyle changes the habit of the patients the non anatomical and anatomical causes of low urinary tract okay ramesh so what do you mentioned there are so many symptoms but when a patient comes to you with some of these symptoms how do you investigate see first i would like to take the history of the patient what is he what is his lifestyle is he a smoker is he a alcoholic is he a regular drinker or is he just a social drinker which really doesn't matter or his previous family history of overactive bladder neurogenic has he got a spine problem so first the history and exam. examination of uh, examination according to the symptoms like if he has a back pain associated with this then might be there is a neurological problem associated mm -hmm. with this next i would like to get the lab basic lab investigations done like a urine routine urea creatinine and the psa value of the patient psa is done according to the age of the patient if he is above 50 years i do a psa otherwise i don't try to do it a common urine routine and culture is the one the basic thing which i would do like to do for all the patients the other thing is next what is after the lab what do i do i would like to do a basic radiological investigation what is it it's a basic ultrasound i would like to do an ultrasound will tell me the any anatomical lesion which is there and also in ultrasound i would like to look at the post void vestibular urine how much of urine remains behind after he passes urine because that is very significant for me because the more the residual urine the more the infection is chances of infection is then i evaluate myself it is neurogenic non neurogenic or obstructive symptoms which are causing this this one next what else do i do more then if i find the stroke or stream of urination is very for the frequency is there i might do an ascending urethrogram also to see the urethra that is an x ray which is done putting a dye in the penile urethra then the last what is that i see i try to do a neuroflowmetry neuroflowmetry is nothing but trying to ask the patient to pass in urine on a commod which is connected to sensor which gives me a graph of how many ml of urine should pass per second what is the immediate effect of immediately is this flow there or delayed flow or an obstructive flow with these i would like to do the main basic investigation if i find something abnormal with the bladder if i find something is wrong with the residual higher then i might go and do my urodynamics test what is urodynamics urodynamics is nothing but a test which tells me the neurological way of the bladder functioning it is anatomical or non anatomical also with it okay so after you investigate so what's your uh, you know modus operandi how do you plan for treatment so what sort of a treatment you would like see first i would with all these basic investigation i try to find out what disease is is it a uh, anatomical disease or non anatomical disease if it is a non anatomical then i go into the primary cause of the disease mm -hmm. like if it is a urinary tract infection i would see the number of pustules with it and the culture which antibiotic is sensitive to try to treat, treat the patient with that so that the urinary tract is cleared after that repeat again after a week's time a urine routine and see what is the amount of it then reevaluate the patient it doesn't end with this you have to reevaluate urinary tract might be a thing which we are seeing but what is that caused urinary tract is what you have to see and find out 
So at that time I re-evaluate by doing a uroflometry again an ultrasound and a urine rating. If nothing is there, then I'm happy with the patient that there's no anatomical cause. It was just a urinary tract leading to these symptoms. Okay. If it is an anatomical cause, then what? Like if it is a phimosis. Phimosis is nothing but the perpusal skin will not retract. But if it is a phimosis leading to obstruction, I do a circumcision for this patient. If it is a meatal stenosis, what is meatal stenosis? The tip of the penis meatus, where the opening where the patient passes urine. Meatus in a male is at the tip of the penis and urethral tip in a female. If there is closure in that, we have to open the meatus. In a male, we might do a meatotomy or a meatoplasty if it is a too tight meatus. Indirectly opening the obstruction. In a female, we do an urethral dilatation. It is more more than enough for this patient. Sir. In females, if you see, this is usually age related. As age goes on, the estrogen and the progesterone hormone variation in a female causes more dryness in those areas, leading to shrinkage in the opening passage and leading to urethral stenosis. In this, we dilate the meatus. If there is stitcher in the urethra, what do you do? Stitcher. We have to find out where the stitcher it is in the bulbar urethra, membranous urethra, or the bulbomembranous junction. The first point is relieve that obstruction. How do you relieve? By just doing a urethrotomy, or we call it visual internal urethrotomy endoscopically. There are two methods in this: the open method and the endoscopic method. We always try to do the endoscopic method first. But if it is a young age patient with a longer length of stretcher, then we try to do the open method in which buccal mucosal urethroplasty is the best. It is because the long lastingness of the buccal urethroplasty is better than the endoscopic VI. But is a soft lens stitcher, smaller lens stitcher, I think an endoscopic method is better. The next cause is prostatitis in males. What is prostatitis? Infection of the prostatic urethra, prostate. And the prostatic urethra. In prostatitis, why it is caused? One of the reasons it is because of co-associated is diabetes, improperly treated urinary tract infection, or less ejaculation of the semen about leading to accumulation of prostatic fluid inside. Prostatic fluid is nothing but fructose in this. A co collection of them without being ejaculated leads to infection. It's like sugar kept in a place which gets infected. So it is like this. We have to treat prostatitis by antibiotics and an ejaculation. The next is prostatic enlargement in males. In this, we call it as benign prostatic hyperplasia. If there is a prostatic uh, prostatic hyperplasia, then we have to endoscopically remove the prostate. But when there is a prostatic hypertrophy, we have to first. Find the PSA value to be correlated with it because we have to classify it into benign or malignant. If it is benign, we try to do T or basic endoscopic method, which is the TURP, the bipolar TURP, or the laser TURP. If it is just the high bladder neck, then we do a bladder neck incision, which is more than enough. If it is a fibrotic prostate or a high bladder neck, it is the bladder neck incision we do. Do we do for all prostatic high? Prostatic enlargement patients and bladder neck patient surgery first, no. We would always try on medical line of treatment. If medical line fails, then it is into the surgical technique. Please understand that in prostate, the medical line of treatment is the first line of treatment and then the surgical line of treatment. Excellent, uh, Dr. Ravish, uh, because uh, you enumerated an elaborate list of uh, treatment uh, procedures. But in this season of uh, Corona and the COVID, where uh, people are in lockdown phase, so there are certain people who want to know, um, you know, is there any non-medical way? So one of the ways you told by medicines, you can treat the uh, prostatic uh, obstruction. Is there any uh, thing, something they would uh, sit at home and do before they reach uh, the hospital? So like uh, restriction, fluid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, now emergency, if you can't reach the doctor, there is some amount of lifestyle modifications which you can do. That is. Try to take in fluids less in the night time because you have increased nocturia in this. Keep yourself more with citric acid or juices or something is only because that causes acidic urine. Acidic urine causes less bacterial growth. 
The other one is timed voiding and double voiding, which is the timed voiding means every two hours try to go just empty your urine and in the daytime and in the night before you go to bed, empty your urine and go to bed and somewhere once in the midnight just kept emptying, leading not to more of retention of urine. The other thing is lifetime medications stop on coffee, tea and this which is more, increases the production of more urine and causes irritability to the bladder also. Smoking and alcohol, please restrict it if it is possible. If you can stop it, that is the best I can ask you. So that's a good uh, you know, advice for those people who are actually uh, staying at home uh, during the season of lockdown. So, um, so the other complications uh, with uh, you know during the lockdown, there are so many people actually holding themselves oh, because if we go to the hospital, uh, they might get corona or something like that. But uh, don't delay your treatment. So I would like to, I would like Dr. Ravish to enumerate about the complications. If uh, timely intervention for la low renal tract symptoms is not taken, so what will happen? What will it ultimately lead to? See, approaching a doctor in a in a hospital should not be delayed at all to see you. Because you come to a hospital, you will get corona as something which is, I would like to say frankly, it is nonsense. I think the patients are screened before they are taken up into the hospital and hospitals are better places for you to come actually. If it is a COVID hospital, they will not let the normal patient to come inside at all. Mm -hmm. If it is a COVID patient, I don't think so without screening they let those patients come into the hospital corridor where you are walking in. Yeah. Only thing which I advise you is to have the basic precaution of hand sanitization, okay. keeping the social distancing in, wear a mask and then please come to the hospital. By delaying it, you are damaging your health in and, you, and the disease progress is going on without getting treated. Any disease which is not treated is going to cause more harm to you than less harm. See, like LUTAC has asked me, what are the complications? See, if it's an obstructive symptom, if you are delaying your coming to the doctor and an obstruction is going on, the primarily is because of retention and this, the chance of urinary tract infection is so higher. Because of delaying in coming, the bladder gets enlarged too much, causing non-neurogenic, neurogenic bladder. What does that mean? See, if you take a balloon, if you inflate the balloon too big, every time you go on inflating, the balloon doesn't empty completely. There is a sag effect remaining after that. Yes. If the sag effect remains same in the bladder, lifelong it is not going to recover. Okay. Causing the double mucosa and the bladder muscle damage. That means something you have created which is not going to recover. So do you need this damages or lifelong you suffer or you just come in a step ahead before that, see to that you are treated and lifelong your disease is not there and also your co-associated damages are not there. The other most bad thing which I see when your lutus is not treated is longer it leads to renal damage. Why? How? One is because of back pressure where the urine is not emptying, the pressure goes to the kidney and damages the, damages the kidney nephrons. The other is the urinary tract which is below is being thrown up into the kidney because of the back pressure changes and this infection causes renal damage and remember one thing renal damage to an extent is slightly recoverable but the other things are not recoverable with age these kidneys don't regenerate properly so the damage caused is a permanent damage and lifelong you will have to suffer for this please and if you have comorbid conditions like diabetes and hypertension which is already putting a strain on your kidneys with this, you will suffer more than less. Please don't help back to come to a hospital to see the doctor. Anything else is better. So if you say that you are going to go avoid COVID and go to sit at home with the disease, that means you are damaging something else. The risk of you coming to the hospital and getting some other disease is very low than what is going to progress tomorrow and damage you. Please understand this. Never sit back at home and just think. Oh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ravish, about that uh, answer. Actually, I was about to ask you the next question as the kidney damage. But anyway, you have mentioned about uh, the, you know, how does uh, the kidney gets affected because of uh, not getting treatment for the lower renal tract symptoms. As he already mentioned, I just want to tell that kidneys are uh, having something called an irreversible damage. So, as he already mentioned that. So, don't get into that post of not you know getting that kidney back so ultimately we will end up in having uh, you know kidney damage bringing about a chronic kidney disease 
and ultimately getting for either dialysis as a long term or in a renal transplant. So to avoid that, I think uh, staying at home uh, is fine. But at the point of time, whenever you require help, it is better to approach to the hospital and to the right persons to make it uh, your uh, you know journey towards your treatment a uh, happy journey. So any uh, final comments? Uh, See, uh, the only final comment which I would like to people to take in is lower urinary tract symptoms. I'm just relating to the lower urinary tract symptoms. Mm -hmm. When you feel there is a decrease in the flow of urine, there is hesitancy to pass urine. There is increased frequency of urination. There is blood in your urine. There is burning maturation. Fever. There is fever, chills. Please get back to your doctor immediately. If there is no doctor, what you would like to do? Now, one more thing which is opened up in the medical system is where the government is allowed is video consultancy. So at least make an effort to take a video consultant to any doctor, urologist or someone who is available who will see your symptoms and tell you this is what you need. If it is a basic urinary tract symptom, we would tell you on phone or send you a prescription saying that these are the antibiotics you take and you follow us up on the line. At least be in contact, if you are afraid to go, at least be in contact with the doctor by video consultancy. This is allowed by the, our, the Indian Medical Council now. So if nothing happens, the two minutes you are wasting to have a video consultancy. So first, one thing you have to remember in life, your health is more important than anything else. But with the COVID, a disaster with us again, now what is it? So there is a lot of changes in the system letting you have a video consultancy, where your senior consultants talk to you, tell you what is the progress, that will make you have a better life. Don't sit and think by not doing anything. Please have your video consultancy or if you are not able to just walk into a good hospital which has a COVID ward which is different and a different non-COVID ward. So you will not be infected by going to this hospital. Please don't have this wrong concept at all. But your social distancing, your hygiene, this should be maintained. Please remember this. Wear your mask, keep your social distancing, have an hygiene which will prevent you from all the things. Thank you. So, uh, so I thank uh, Dr. Ravish. Uh, yeah. It was a wonderful discussion and probably the people are well educated now. As you already mentioned, uh, because uh, this is the season of Corona and uh, COVID-19. And uh, this Corona or uh, COVID-19 is not, uh, you know, it is not going to go off immediately. It is for there to stay like any other viral infections to stay over. So you, the as he told that social distancing and uh, uh, hand sanitization, whatever the necessary precautions you have to take and you have to take it for the life. Anyway, this is a good uh, topic what we have discussed. Thank you very much uh, from, uh, from the Department of Urology, Astor RV Hospital.